Go send him in. Come in. Oh, please, uh, close the door, Judge. There's a draft. Oh, sorry. The uh, governor? Uh, the governor is in conference. Uh, sit down, Judge. He'll be with you in a moment. And children? Hey, just fine. There's things that won't wait. What? Uh, Bill Shanks of the lower house wants to know if you'll support his bill for state-financed rest homes for the aged. Uh, John, it's not fiscally sound. Well, not fiscally sound? It would bankrupt the state for the next quarter of a century. Jimmy. 31% of the registered voters in this state are over 60. It would buy an awful lot of votes in the next election. Yeah, well, you tell Shanks I won't support him in his bill, but I will support him in a $300,000. Now, wait a minute. Hold that. Hold that. I'll support him in a $3 million bond issue to be submitted to the voters in the next election. Doesn't have a ding-dong chance of getting passed, but at least all the old-timers will remember that I was for it. Now, do you want to commute the uh, death sentence of William Reed to life in prison? Oh, he murdered uh, his wife. Jimmy. Uh, I've had two independent polls taken. It averages out to 61% of the populace for death and only 39% for commutation. Hmm? My duty's plain. Negative. Don't you want to study his plea? Don't you even want to consider it? Nope. There is one pertinent question I didn't ask, though. This, uh, what's his name? This, uh... William Reed. Yeah, this William Reed. Did he vote for me? or against me in the last election. Negative. I will not commute. Judge, let me introduce you. Gentlemen, this is Mr. William George Orby. He's the Chief Magistrate, Superior Court of our state. Maggie, you already know. This is uh, Jimmy Brown. Here's my good right hand. Yeah, Mr. Jim. Brown, I've heard a lot about you. This is John O'Brien. my here. My conscience. We're born on the same street. We've been together so long, we can almost read each other's minds. Mr. O'Brien, it's a pleasure. Judge. Judge, this, uh... Oh, Sweeney. Judge, I want you to meet the next first lady of our state, my future wife. How do you do? How do you do, Judge? Judge, I want you to marry us. I, uh, I... Well, what's I, the matter, John? I don't understand. I thought... You thought I was it, married, huh? Yes. Well, I am. I am, Judge. I want you to take care of that, too. Take care of it. Sweetie, you better run along now. I'll uh, be with you in about 20 minutes, then you and I are gonna do this town up right. Don't be late. Yes, Judge. My divorce. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Your divorce? Yes, Judge. The governor's divorce. Judge, do you think it can be kept quiet? No. No, I don't think so. Well, I don't mean quiet like in a tomb. I just mean inconspicuous. No, I don't think so. Why not? Because it's in the public province. It's a public announcement like marriage or birth or death. death. Yes. Well, we know the divorce can't be kept a secret, Judge. We know that's impossible. But we do expect, however, that nothing more than the fact that there's been a divorce be made public. 
There's an election coming up in three months, isn't there? You know as much about elections as I do, don't you, Judge? Yes, and yours is an elected office, too, as I remember. As a matter of fact, as I recall, I uh, supported you in your office. I think I gave you a great deal of support. But when do you stand again, Judge? It's, uh, it's in November, isn't it? Judge? Yes, this November. Maggie, you make a note. I want the party to go all out for the judge. I'll stump for him personally. We want to see him re-elected. If you don't understand, you should speak to your lawyer. Well, I'm speaking to you, Judge. I think you're the best man, you're the best placed man to arrange this whole thing. Well, I can, on a personal basis, select counsel, supervise the affair. A sad affair, Judge. Yes. But I don't see how I can keep it out of the newspapers, keep it inconspicuous. I can't close my court. Why not? Unless both parties agree. Done. Even then, I have to have a valid reason for it. Why? Because the newspapers would ask questions in a very loud voice. My conduct could be investigated. I could be reprimanded. But more to the point, Governor's secrecy would be self-defeating. It would, as it were, whet the appetites of the newspapers and television and so forth. Well, far. that does it. All right, he's verified what you've told me, but I still want the divorce. After the election. I told you now. After the election, I can't wait. I can't wait. Why not? Oh, you're nosy. You know that you are very nosy. Why not? <sighs> She's pregnant. But to get an abortion. It's that simple, Sam. Tell her to get an abortion. Nope. Sam, you do like your job as governor, huh? You do want to be reelected. You yes, do like your I job. do like my job. Indeed, I do like my job, and I am going to be reelected. Well, then wait. Wait till after the election. I don't think I have to. You trying to teach me politics? No, I don't think I have to. I think I can swing this, Jimmy. Now I know I can. All right, you tell me. Judge, what do you need to properly close your court from the public? Well, a cause of action so salacious, such a nature as to appeal to the most prurient passions of the public. Prurient? Yeah, that means something too dirty for the public to hear. Yeah, I know what it means, John. I'm well aware of what it means. There's no problem, Judge, no problem at all. Yeah, it's gonna leak. I agree with you there, it's gonna leak. Well, then get an abortion. Wait! She doesn't want an abortion. This is going to come as something of a shock to you. I don't want her to have one either. See, I'm 50 years old, I'm close to being an old man, and I like the thought of having a young pregnant wife about, making me feel young again. I think, dang it, Jimmy, I'm virile. I didn't know that, but I am, and I like the thought of that too. My youngest child is 15 years old, and I enjoy her. The others are grown, they've gone. As the years pass, they mean less to me. I want this new young life. I don't want to do anything that'll spoil it. No abortion. Then wait. Let her get round and plump and pretty. After the election, marry her. No. Yeah, the public just might buy it. Make an honest woman of her. Why, well, the public might buy it anyway. They, they might love you for it. And even if they don't, you got the job in the next four years anyway, and a lot can happen in four years' time. The public does not have a memory like the proverbial elephant. You can get drunk and run the public down with a truck after breakfast, and pay their medical bills for them after lunch, and they will love you for it and thank you after dinner. Now, Sam, do what I tell you. Wait. I don't think I have to. You keep saying that. No, you said that. You said the public memory is short. It's three months till election day. If we get it done before that, it'll be old hat by November. Maybe. Maybe. It's like lying down with a dog. Maybe you won't get fleas. Could I have a drink of water, please? There's a bar over there. Fix yourself a snort, Judge. Let me, Judge. Thank you. Judge, during your days as a lawyer, how many divorce cases were you involved in? You contribute your talents to? A hundred, 150. You make a lot of money, did you, Judge? 
Did you ever feel for those people? Did you ever weep for the pain in their hearts? Some of those marriages could have been saved. Did you try? Or were you more concerned with your feet? Oh, now what are you so shocked about? As though you'd never been dirtied before. I don't understand. You're not shocked by me? You don't feel dirtied by me? No, Governor, I do not. Oh, you sweat a lot. Your lips are dry. You keep licking them. Why is that? I don't understand why you are abusing me. You could walk out of here. That's all it takes. You could just walk out of public life and walk out of it for good. I don't understand why you are abusing me, sir. Because you're a hypocrite. Define that, John. Hypocrite or hypocrisy? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. The act or practice of feigning to be what one is not, to feel what one does not feel, especially the false assumption of an appearance of virtue or religion, canting simulation of goodness. Well, thank you. Because you're a hypocrite, Judge, and if there's anything on God's earth I hold in contempt, it's a hypocrite. See, I'm corrupt. I'm a dirty human being. But I'm honestly corrupt. I'm blatantly dirty. I deceive others, but I never deceive myself. I'm going to tell you something, Judge. I'm going to tell you just what divorce is. Divorce is the ultimate, it's the final act of the decay and the corruption of the moral, the religious, the personal social values, the realities and the beliefs that have been the measure of Christian society for 2,000 years and of Roman, Greek and Hebrew society before that. <laughs> How's that grab you? Huh? How's that for a, a corn-fed philosopher, huh? Man of the people? <laughs> How about that, Johnny? How about it, huh? Do I kid myself, kiddo? <laughs> oh, Judge, you close your mouth. There are flies in the room. Sit down. Listen. I love to hear the sound of my own voice. So you just listen. You see, Judge, I'm a hedonist. And I want my pleasures right now. I'm like an addict. And so are my constituents, all the people that vote me in here to this great office. We're all alike. We're all corrupted. We're all like addicts, with one difference. I understand. See, I know evil. I know corruption when I say it. But I'm not average. I'm not ordinary that way. You see, most men practice self-delusion. But I'll be hanged if I will. Divorce is an announcement, it's a, a confirmation, an affirmation of personal weakness and failure and spiritual decay. Spiritual? Oh, did you get the word, Johnny boy? And make a note that I know what it means. Divorce is a public proclamation of the inability of human beings to love, to give rather than to take, to help rather than to hurt. It's an act of cheap and selfish human beings. And that's the electorate judge. And that's me, Johnny boy. And I want my divorce, and I want it right now. The leader of his people. I haven't finished. The people's choice. The noblest they had to offer, the wisest and the best. I told you I wasn't finished, and I'm coming to that, Johnny boy. I'm coming to the people and myself. I'm going to tell you all about the people and myself. No, no, you're not, because I'm through. I'm leaving, Sammy boy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. For old times' sake. For old times' sake, huh? You know how I hate to have anybody walk out when I'm making a speech. I don't know you, Sam. You used to be a... The world used to be young. Come on, stay a while. At least until Jimmy here finishes that cigar. Okay. Okay. You see, even the corrupt ones, ah, oh, they have to be loved. <laughs> even the corrupt ones want to be understood by those they love. They even want their corruptness understood, if not sympathized with. Judge, was I wrong about what I said about the boss? Or you put it rather strongly. Or did I lie? Was I wrong? No. It's a dirty business. Yes. Yeah.
Judge, I uh, disremember how many divorce cases you were involved in. You know, you contributed to how many corruptions of the human spirit, how many times you lent your great professional calling, your skill, your great intellect, how many ticking minutes and hours of this year one mortal life you spent presiding over an act which you felt was corrupt. Jimmy, how do you vote? Was I wrong? Am I wrong? I'm a politician, Sam, not a moralist. Oh, come on, Jim. <laughs> I've been married to the same woman for 24 years, Sam. You know that. And I'll say this for you. When you give a testimonial, brother, you really give a testimonial. Do you uh, love her, Jimmy? Look, Sam, you're the governor. Therefore, your life is open to public scrutiny, not mine. I wish you'd kindly change the subject. Yeah. And, yes, I love her. You hold the weak ones, the corrupt ones like me in contempt, though, huh? I told you, Sam, I'm a politician, yeah. not a moralist. I told you to come off it. You put a name to it, Sam. But I don't like your kind of people, and I never have. But politics is politics, is that right? That's right. You'll go along with us weak ones, us corrupt ones, huh? You'll just play the game. That's right, Sam. Like you said, politics is politics. And somebody's got to run the world, bearing with all the ambivalences and so on and so on. I do the best I can with what comes to hand. Maggie, what about you? I... I've been divorced twice. I'm one of the weak, corrupt ones. One child, isn't it? Yes. Are you happy? Well, this, this is my happiness. You're my happiness. Happiness. Happiness, yes, of course. Oh, leave it to a woman in her ignorance to touch upon the truth. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about, isn't it, John? Boy, he's going metaphysical on us. I have got a bloody election to win, and he's going metaphysical. You're derriere I am. I'm talking politics. Politics? What do you think it's all about, except how to win an election and be happy at the same time, personally happy? John, define that for me, please. Happy or happiness? You choose, and without the acid. Happiness. Noun. Prosperity. State of well-being, a state of being favored by fortune. A state of comfort and peace. You want more? No, that's enough. Judge, what are the grounds for divorce in this state? Adultery, desertion, willful neglect, uncontrollable temper, non-support, not part of the husband. Is that enough? No, there are more. Come on. Well, desertion, cruelty, drunkenness, attempt on life of spouse, uh, impotence, Indignities, defamation of other spouse. Or did I say that already? And incompatibility, of course. And in fact, you name it, we've got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's it all mean, Judge? Well, it means if you want a divorce, we'll try to find the means. Mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, mutual consent is not a ground. No. Why is that, Oracle? The theory being that the family unit is the root and the basis of our society, of our civilization. The destruction of the family unit, divorce, is therefore the destruction of our society, our civilization. Therefore, the destruction of our civilization, divorce, is a concern to all society, of all men, not just those primarily involved. You can't legislate morality. The state has no right to intrude on the individual's conscience. But the welfare of society must be safeguarded. Therefore, it's the right and duty of society of all men to impose limits on the rights of the individual to destroy the family unit. Divorce is not only an illness itself, it's a highly contagious disease. It's as dangerous as smallpox or typhus. The good help of society, the family unit of all men, comes before the right of the individual to do as he pleases, before the freedom of the individual to choose what he wishes even before the happiness of the individual. Happiness? Ah, happiness again. Oh, happy, happy day. What are the reasons for divorce in the state, John? 
Well, I've told you already, adultery... No, no, wait, those are grounds. You gave me grounds. I want the reasons, the causes, why people want divorces, why they get them, why they break up their families, why they desert their responsibility to each other, to their children. You got no answer for me, Judge? Come on. Jimmy? Jimmy? John. Because they've forgotten how to love. Others, John. Others. Because they have forgotten how to love either God or others. But not themselves. Oh, no, indeed, not themselves. One last thing now before we part. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to define for you. Oh, my good friend. My great loss in losing you is the fact that I'm going to have to learn how to use a dictionary. See, love is a noun. It's a strong feeling of personal attachment induced by sympathetic understanding or by ties of kinship, ardent affection. The benevolence attributed to God likened to a father's love for his children. Man's adoration of God, strong liking, fondness, goodwill. A tender and passionate affection for one of the opposite sex. Love of others. Love of God. We've forgotten how to do that, though, haven't we? You see, love is essentially sacrificial. It is a willingness of one to sacrifice his personal desires, his personal happiness to the happiness of another for one's husband, one's wife, one's children, one's God. But we're losing that, aren't we? There are other gods abroad, aren't there, John? There's avarice and greed and weakness and selfishness. We love God less so that we can love ourselves more. We can no longer give to those we love because of the taking. <laughs> the taking, yeah, we're very, very busy taking. See, man's spirit has always been the battleground for the good and the evil that's within him. And God has given us a privilege to make our own choice as to which one will conquer. God has given us a free will. But we use that free will very unwisely, don't we, my dear friends? Indeed, I, who am an evil, and a corrupt man, but one who is a believer in the reality and the power of God, as was Lucifer, wonder. I wonder when God will have enough of us. I wonder when he will have used up all of his patience with us. I contemplate Sodom and Gomorrah, and I wonder. This is a, a democratic society, and we, the people that live right here, are as responsible for what happens in it as we are responsible for what happens in our very souls, our very spirits, if you will. And the breakup of this family unit, this divorce, the destruction of society, we know that. We know it. We know it as we know the sky is blue and the plants are green. And yet, we lend every assistance to the spread of this social suicide, the spread of this disease, this disease that's as lethal to society as cancer is to man. We speak with a forked tongue, <laughs> and we kid ourselves. We're as permissive with our society as we are with our children and ourselves. Be happy. Oh, go forth. Yes, go forth. Tomorrow may never show up. Oh, God himself, or Christ rather, said, the man, therefore, will leave the father, will leave the mother, and will cling to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. And so they are no longer two, they are but one. And what God then hath joined, let no man put asunder. The God of the Catholic, the God of the Jew, abhors divorce. The God of the Protestant strongly discourages, and yet we, we play around. We marry, we divorce with the fidelity of cats in an alley. We want better food, better homes, better houses to blazes with the sublimity of the human spirit. Well, that's me, and that is my constituents, all of the people that vote me in here, that put me here into this office. Can you tell me that these people, this public, 
will have a holier-than-thou attitude toward me, their fair-haired boy? Ha! Huh. I love them, and they love me, and they're weak, and I am weak, and they are corrupt, and I am corrupt, and they want something, and I give it to them, and I want something, and they give it to me. It's a love affair, Jimmy. It is a love affair. And you tell me that because I am sick and tired of living with a woman that I've lived with for 20 years, and now the time has come when I want a rich, ripe, beautiful, young, fresh wife with all the fun and the pleasures and all the games that they're going to vote me out of office, they'll probably give me a medal. And who do they worship? They worship movie stars. The tire of their husbands and wives as frequently as a child does, an old dog. Preachers who teach a softer, less demanding religion, and politicians who feed the wants, the desires of their constituents by stealing from unborn generations. And this permissive society wantonly sits back here and permits and supervises divorce, permits and supervises this destruction of society. Our civilization is committing suicide. The people have their fingers on the trigger, and they are pulling the trigger. And do you think, Jimmy, do you think that these same people care one whit in Hades about my personal life, about my personal morality? Except as an item of public gossip, of course. As long as I keep giving them what they want? Sure. Go ahead. Make it a romance. Make it a great love. Tell them about how you feel warmth and respect for your wife, your present wife, but that your love, your passionate love for the woman you want to marry leaves you no choice. Jimmy, you about threw that cigar? Just about. Good. Because I think I'm going to be sick. Goodbye, Sam. Judge, I uh, have an appointment with my future wife. I, I wonder if you'd take care of the whole thing for me? The governor doesn't think much of the moral fiber of our people. Is he right? I don't think so. But it's up to each of us to prove him wrong. Divorce is a serious problem. It permanently scars the lives of the people involved. And the fate of the children is even worse. They have a right to a secure home and to the loving presence of both their parents. Divorce deprives them of this right. There is only one remedy, fidelity to our own commitments, loyalty to our families, Trust in God. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>